Well, hello there, Kim Rowe here with For The Nest, and I am going to be doing a project where I'm going to be taking a brass lamp like this that you can find in pretty much any thrift shop and transforming it into a fun design that is, this is a beach theme, but you can do pretty much anything. And so if you wanna follow along and see this transformation of the lamps, um, watch this video. I think you'll have fun and hopefully you can try this. It's, it's a great project. If you've never painted furniture, grab a lamp. You probably have one in your attic or your basement or your guest room and uh, follow along with me and then send me pictures. I'd love to see them. Project, I'm using two different molds. This one is the trimmings IOD trimmings number one and this one is the seashell mold. They are great to go together because the trimming mold has the rope design which is kind of nautical and these two lamps were a um, custom order from a customer who wanted two matching beach lamps. So what I'm doing here is I like to always use cornstarch in my molds. It just is almost like you're flouring your pan when you're making a cake. Um, so I like to, I just get the um, salt and pepper shakers at the dollar store and fill them with cornstarch and keep them available for when I'm using the molds. And and then I take a small uh, brush and just dust in the areas, the crevices, so that I make sure I get it all um, covered. Then for the trimming piece, I'm rolling this into almost like a little snake, measuring how much I need to go around the um, top part. And I'm also going to make one for the base a little bit later. But um, I just press it in using the um, mold as where I press it into using my thumb and then because of the micro trim edge, micro rim edge, um, it works great for uh, just pressing off and giving you a nice even edge as you're making the back of your mold nice and smooth so that it creates a good connection with the piece that you're gluing it onto. So once the mold is done, I turn it over and as you can see, it just pops right out really easily because of the cornstarch being in that crevice. Um, so now what I'm going to do is figure out how much I need for the uh, circumference of the lamp and see how much I need so then I can break it off. This particular roping design is a great one to um, break into sections and because of the little diagonal um, design it makes it really easy to match up and add to um, different lengths. So if I was doing this on a dresser or something like that, you can also make multiple pieces and have them attach super easily because of the design of the angle on that mold. So now that I found the right size of the mold, I'm going to use the tight bond glue. I like to keep it stored upside down in a cup nearby so that the glue comes out easier and I just add a little bit um, to the mold and then you'll see that I'm going to spread the glue to the edge. You want to make sure that all of the edges of your mold get good coverage with the glue to um, ensure that you're going to have a good contact and that it will not have any gaps or any areas that would not adhere to the project. Um, so this mold is going to be just at the top. I will make one later for the bottom, but once I get that in there, I'm just going to press it not too hard because you don't want the mold. The clay is still moldable. Now I'm going to use a the seashell mold and use the scalloped one first um, and add some more cornstarch into those molds. Um, that I will be using. So I will use a small paintbrush to spread that around again, making sure that each little crevice and cavity has a good amount of cornstarch in there. And then using the clay, I will press it into those again. And if you haven't tried this, um, the air dry clay works really great with the IOD molds. It's an artist grade air dry clay. So it really gives a good casting of the 
the mold so that the details show um, extremely well. You can also use uh, two-part resin. You can also use these molds with uh, food as far as pie crusts, chocolate, butter. I've seen all kinds of things used. Now, if you use it with food, you would not use it with clay. You have to choose one or the other. But here I'm just pressing the clay into the molds again um, and using my thumb to press off the edges using the micro rim edge to make sure that it has a nice smooth um, backing and it will make, make it easier when I'm going to glue this onto the lamp if the back is nice and smooth. I wanted these two lamps to match in their design, not necessarily everything, but making these castings of these seashells. I'm working with a few different designs, but the main front view of the lamp will be pretty much the same. So um, just kind of creating these and almost laying it out to see how I want the design to look first, and then I'll glue them down. I have to say this is probably one of my favorites. The sand dollar is so cute and it's just definitely, if you like the beach, this is a mold that I've used many times for lamps, for all kinds of just decorative things at my parents' beach house. And if you're, even if you don't have a beach house and you just love the beach or you love seashells, this is a great mold to use. So again, just kind of figuring out my design and adding the glue and I'm gonna to continue to layer these on and move my way around the lamp. So this is the other lamp and I had put a few of the molds on earlier. Now I'm just adding some to the back. Um, the starfish is a great one and there's different size starfishes in this mold. Um, and again, I'm adding the glue and making sure that I get every little edge of this so that it really connects well with the lamp itself. So here I'm going to be adding the bottom roping design from the trimming mold and again just um, going to be spreading the cornstarch again and adding my clay into this. Um, the rope design, I've used it many times on dressers and all kinds of things. The, the trimming molds are, are a great way to add decorative trim to any piece of furniture or lamp, even picture frames and mirrors um, are great ways to use these molds. They come in three different designs. This happens to be the first one, but there are actually about four or five trimming 
um, designs on each mold. So the great thing about molds is that you just can continue using them over and over again, just getting more clay or resin. Um, so they're a great product to have. Again, as I push the clay up, I like to work from back to front and push the clay up away from me. And, um, and as I do that, it fills in any gaps that maybe were there. Um, and it just gives it a nice smooth finish as well. One other thing I, I like to mention is when I have extra clay, I always put it back into my Ziploc bag, making sure that I keep the bag closed because this clay does dry out kind of quickly. And um, when you're not gonna be using it for a good amount of time, even in the Ziploc bag, you can store it in the freezer and it will last a long time. So again, adding more glue to the edges of this and making sure that it is all ready to be adhered to the lamp. Now this piece did not have a long enough section for the lamp. So what I'm gonna do now is create just a small little section of the same mold so that I can fill in the gap to uh, where the uh, piece did not connect. And like I said, this mold specific roping one is a really easy one to fill in because of the design. You can just break off little pieces of it so that you can figure out what size you need as you are connecting them together. So here I'm gonna figure out, do I need that full piece that I just made or do I only need a few sections of it? And as you can see, I just pinch a little piece off and then get my glue and fill in that gap there. And one of the great things about this air dry clay is once I've put this little piece in there and it has dried, I will paint over all of this. And if there's any little gaps, I can add just a little bit of clay in there to fill the gaps. Um, and once it's painted, you won't even notice that it was not a full piece. So here's an example of where I found a little crack after it had dried and I'm pressing a little extra piece of glue in there using the back of a, the paintbrush or you can use your finger, almost like you would spackle some holes on your drywall. Um, sometimes I put a little bit of glue in there um, on the clay and press it into the, the crevice that needs to be filled in. But once I paint it, you won't even notice that there was a crack there. So this is the fun part. Well, every part of it's fun, but this is fun when you can really see the transformation taking place. The color I'm using here is farmhouse paint French blue, and I'm using a fan brush. You can also use a chip brush. Sometimes I use that to stipple into the details of the molds. I like to wait till the mold has set for a few minutes, sometimes 15, 20 minutes, but also you can let it fully dry and harden. Um, if, you if you don't wait, and you're gonna paint it right away, just be careful not to press too hard because the mold could still be soft and the clay could still be moldable and you would mess up your design a little bit. So that's why I like to let it sit a little bit. But just giving this um, a full coat, I may need to go back and put a second coat in some little areas, but you could also even add your molds before you painted the whole lamp and do your two coats you know, over this uh, at the same time, I like to paint the, the lamp first originally. So now this is the scumble mixed with cotton white. I use scumble, which is a glazing gel by Farmhouse Paint. And you can actually create any color glaze you want when you mix the scumble with one of the colors of paint. So here I mixed it with cotton white and I just put it in the actual jar, the scumble jar, because I barely had any left and I just decided to use it all in one 
um, container and this white I will use up until it um, it's gone so I this is a great color and I use the white glaze quite a bit so you as you can see what I did is I used a chip brush and stippled the glaze into all of the cracks and crevices just over the entire design of the lamp I like to use the blue shop towels to wipe back the glaze. You can use them damp if you want to. I, In this situation, I just used a dry shop towel. But as I work in sections, I will lay the glaze on there with my chip brush and then wipe it back with the shop towel and try and move in um, the same direction. Now with this lamp, I'm trying to go around um, the base using the same movement so if i was doing this on a dresser i would go straight across trying to keep in the the same direction as the grain of the wood but once i get into the the seashells and things like that you just kind of dab it and try and bring it so that it is nice and smooth and that there's no areas where the glaze is sitting and pooling up so that it gives it a nice clean look and as I do this, I just keep moving around the, the lamp and keep adding glaze where needed and wiping back where I just placed it. Glazes can be layered too, so as this dries, if I want to add a little more white, I can do that. Or you could add another color if that's what you wanted to do with glaze. But you don't want to put the glaze on while it's still wet because it will wipe back some of your original glaze. So letting it dry in between is good. But as you can see, it sets into the little nooks and crannies of the mold and really makes a great look on these lamps. I'm so excited about how it turned out. The base here is you can see the um, the roping design. It the Also the original little designs in this brass lamp are getting picked up by the glaze as well. So any little lines, designs, crevices, anything like that, the glaze is going to set into those and really accent those lines. So if you find a piece that has a lot of design in it, it's a great piece to, to add glaze to. So wiping in nice smooth sections is the way to give it a nice clean look. Now if there's a little spot where I missed some glaze, I can always go back in and just push it in there and then wipe it back. Look, I like to work in sections because it, it doesn't dry as quickly and then I can move on to the next section. The last thing I like to do is take a dry brush. So this is the Grip Brush by Farmhouse Paint and it is totally dry, no paint or anything on it. And I'm just going to lightly brush any little areas of where the glaze may sit and be still wet and pulled up in those little crevices. But it also just softens everything. So if there is an area where there's a little bit of glaze and maybe you can see it where I'm pressing it and pulling it, um, it's just going to smooth it out and really soften the whole look. It spreads the white glaze over the French blue and just gives it a really soft look. So that's it. Grab a lamp out of your house and try this. This is one of the most easy projects to get started in painting furniture. Even if you don't add the molds, try painting a lamp.